Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today, we're going to go over week 3 NFL predictions. So last week, I had a record of 11-5, which brings my record on season to 18-14. and 14. Starting off this week on Thursday Night Football, we've got the 49ers hosting the Giants. So the Giants are coming off their first win of the season, where they had a massive 21-point comeback win over the Cardinals. They, they're not playing on a short week, and they're also going to be without some key players, such as Saquon Barkley, left tackle Andrew Thomas, guard Ben Bredesen, and edge rusher Aziz Ojolari. So... With the Giants being without Ben Bredesen and Andrew Thomas, they're missing two players along the offensive line, and that's arguably their two best offensive linemen. And that is going to be a nightmare for the Giants, as Daniel Jones is going to spend more time on his back than he actually is going to be looking for a receiver to throw the ball to. Because Daniel Jones has been sacked 10 times in two games, and the 49ers have an elite pass rush with one of the best defensive players in the NFL, Nick Bosa. So this is going to be a long game for the Giants offensively. 49ers win easily 34-13. Moving on to the games on Sunday, we've got the Browns hosting the Titans. So the Browns are unfortunately without star running back Nick Chubb as he's out for the year after a devastating knee injury. Now the loss of Chubb puts a lot more pressure on Deshaun Watson who hasn't been great in his time in Cleveland. Now I don't think the Browns will have a ton of success offensively, but I don't think they're going to need to have a ton of success offensively because I don't think the Titans offense is all that great, especially their passing attack because I, think, I don't think Ryan Tannehill is very good. But the Titans still have Derrick Henry and he's still one of the best running backs in football and I think the Titans are going to have enough off offensive success running the football and the Titans get the win by a score of 20 to 17. Up next, we've got the Lions hosting the Falcons. So this is a tough game to predict. The Lions are coming off an overtime loss to the Seahawks, and the Falcons are surprisingly 2-0 after back-to-back -back home wins to open up the season. The Falcons are going to try to run the ball with rookie Bijan Robinson and second-year back Tyrell Algier. Now, the Lions have been good against the run as they've allowed just 86 rushing yards a game in their first two games. That could mean Desmond Ritter is going to need to have a good game if the Falcons are going to get the win, and I haven't seen enough from Desmond Ritter to trust him to win a game for the Falcons. So I'm going to take the Lions here in a close one, 24-20. Next game, we've got the Packers hosting the Saints. So this is the first home game for the Packers after they began the season with a pair of road games and split those games with a win against the Bears and a loss to the Falcons. This is the first home start for Jordan Love, who has been good for the Packers so far. And this is going to be a lower scoring game against a good Saints defense that has been really good for the Saints and a big reason why they're 2-0. The Packers' offense will likely get better, as they're most likely going to get Aaron Jones and Christian Watson both back from hamstring injuries, so that's definitely going to help. But this is a game that could go either way. I think this will be a lower-scoring game. I think the Saints have the better defense here, but I think Jordan Love and the Packers' offense will be able to do enough, and the Packers get the win by a final score of 20-16. Next game, we've got the Dolphins hosting the Broncos. So the Dolphins have gotten off to a great start. They are 2-0, and both those games were on the road. So this is their first home game, and they faced the Broncos, who are coming off a 35-33 loss to the Commanders because they couldn't get the two-point conversion after they caught a Hail Mary. Now, this is a big game for the Broncos, as they really need to avoid falling to 0-3 to start the season. But I think the Dolphins are the better team here. Their offense will have success even against a good Broncos defense. But the Dolphins get the win here against the Broncos. And Tua improves to 16-4 at home as the starter. And the Dolphins get the win over the Broncos by a score of 26-17. Up next, we've got the Vikings hosting the Chargers. So this is a huge game for both teams, as both teams are currently 0-2 and desperately searching for their first win of the season. And these two teams are actually pretty similar, because both teams have great offenses and a terrible defense. So this is going to be a fun, high-scoring game between two offenses that will put up a lot of points because they're going to be faced with very little resistance from the opposing defense. Now, I have the Chargers getting the win by a score of 35-33, even though they might be without star running back Austin Eckler for the second straight week, as he's battling an ankle injury. But the Chargers, they pick up their first win of the season, and they beat the Vikings by a score of 35-33. Up next, we got the Patriots at the Jets. So the Patriots are seeking their first win of the season, and they have a good opportunity to get win number one here as they play the Jets, a team they've owned. The Patriots haven't lost to the Jets since 2015, meaning they've won 14 straight against their division rival. Plus, Zach Wilson, in four games against the Patriots, has thrown two touchdowns and seven interceptions. This is going to be a low-scoring game because neither team is going to have much offensive success. Both teams have very good defenses. But I think the Patriots get the win because eventually uh, the Jets' defense is going to go out points because they're going to be so gassed being on the field for 40 plus minutes of the game because the Jets offense will be unable to sustain a drive. But the Patriots get the win here, winning their 15th consecutive game against their division rival the Jets, and they get the win 13-3. Moving on, we've got the Commanders hosting the Bills. So the Commanders have gotten off to a good 2-0 start and are coming off a good comeback win over the Broncos. But the Bills are also coming off a great game where Josh Allen got back on track and the Bills dominated the Raiders. The key for the Bills in this game is protect Josh Allen against a really good Commanders defensive front, which has 10 sacks in two games, which is tied for the most in the NFL. But I think the Bills are the better team here. Their defense will be able to stop a commander's offense, which has been decent so far. And I think the Bills would do a good enough job at keeping the pocket clean. I don't think they'll 
be good, but I think they'll do a good enough job, and the Bills got the win by a score of 27-21. Up next, we got the Jaguars hosting the Texans. So the Jaguars offense needs a bounce back game after a poor 9-point showing a week ago against the Chiefs. Now, the good news for the Jaguars is the Texans have the 6th worst scoring defense in the NFL as they give up 28 points a game. Now, the Texans offense was actually pretty good last week, and C.J. Stroud is coming off a game where he threw 384 yards. Now, I could see Stroud having another big game against a Jaguars secondary that allows 256 passing yards a game in their first two games. But even if Stroud is really good for the Texans once again, I think the Jaguars offense will have a big game and be too much for the Texans to keep up with offensively. Jaguars win 31-24. Moving on, we've got the Colts at the Ravens. So the Colts may be without rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson, who's in the concussion protocol, and that would mean Gardner Minshew will start. But whoever starts for the Colts, whether it's Richardson or Minshew, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with the Ravens, an offense that scored 27 points last week against the Bengals, a team that's got a solid defense. And the Ravens win this game by a score of 30-17. to Moving on, we've got the Seahawks hosting the Panthers. So the Panthers are 0-2 after they fell to the Saints on Monday Night Football. And Seahawks are 1-1 after they picked up their first win of the season with an overtime win over the Lions. The Seahawks got their offense going last week, and I would expect that to continue against the Panthers' defense. It isn't great. I would also look for the Seahawks to get the run game going with Kenneth Walker, as they face a, team, they face a Panthers team that has struggled to stop the run early this season. But I've got the Seahawks improving to 2-1, as they beat the Panthers, who will also be without starting quarterback Bryce Young. But I don't really think that changes anything, whether they've got Bryce Young starting, which they don't. So it's going to be Andy Dalton, but that does not change anything for me. I've got the Seahawks, 24-10. Up next, we've got the Bears at the Chiefs. This game should not be close. The Bears have been terrible so far this season and have not won a game since October of last year. The Chiefs' offense is trying to get going, and I think they find it this week and make it a really long game for the Bears. The Chiefs dominate this game and win by a score of 38-14. Moving on, we've got another game that should be a blowout. That is the Cowboys visiting the Cardinals. So the Cowboys have outscored their opponents 70-10 to in the first two weeks of the season. Now, they are playing what is most likely the worst team in football. The Cowboys' defense should dominate this game. Their offense will be good as well, and the Cowboys blow out the Cardinals, winning 31-10. to Moving on to Sunday Night Football, we've got the Raiders hosting the Steelers. So we will have a live watch party for this game starting about 8-10 Eastern Time on a Sunday. But the Steelers are coming off a Monday Night Football win thanks to a great defensive performance. Their offense wasn't great, but meanwhile, the uh, Raiders got destroyed by the Bills. So... I don't think this will be a very good game. I think it will be a lower scoring game because neither team's offense has been very impressive so far. But I think the Steelers got the win behind yet another great game from their defense, and the Steelers win this one by a score of 21-16 and a pretty boring game. Moving on to Monday Night Football, we've got another Monday Night Football doubleheader. First game, we've got the Buccaneers at the e or sorry, Buccaneers hosting the Eagles. So the Buccaneers are another surprise team that is 2-0 to start the season. Their passing game is good. Now, they face an Eagles team that is good, but hasn't fully clicked yet this season. But I think this will be a close game. I think the Eagles uh, will, will get the win here on a long week going from Thursday to Monday. But I also think the Eagles are the better team here, and they hand the Buccaneers their first loss of the season and win this game by a score of 27-18. And our final game, we've got the Rams at the Bengals. So we'll have a live watch for this game starting by 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, so I hope to see you guys there. But this game is extremely tough to predict because we don't know the status of Joe Burrow, who reaggravated his calf injury in last week's game against the Ravens, and that is the same calf that forced him to miss just about the entire preseason. The Rams have looked really good so far, and Sean McVay has been getting a lot out of his young players on both sides of the ball, especially offensively. But this may come as a surprise, but I'm going to take the Rams because I don't think it matters if the if the Bengals have Burrow or if they don't have Burrow. He's not going to be 100% if he plays, and the Bengals' defense struggled to stop the Ravens a week ago. The Rams' offense has been really good to start the season, and I've got the Rams with the win on Monday Night Football by a score of 28-16. So those are my week three NFL predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications so I don't miss any of videos. I do my best to post as often as possible. Uh, make sure to check out the community tab on my channel where you guys can vote on who you think will win some of this week's big games. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. I do my best to post as often as possible, and I will see you in the next video.